stealing from Gunil um, on performatives. So this is a, um, a staging citizenship by me, Andrew Thomas, at Ustfall University College, which I would like my class to watch before we meet on the 11th of February 2021. Um, and I'll, I'll try to explain the idea of performatives, taking one specific example, um, which um, I, I recommend you to always use um, life examples in your lessons, just so long as it doesn't use as much time as I'm about to use. So my apologies. There was a time when I tried to persuade Gunil to lend me money, because as you will soon uh, realize, Gunil is much more organized um, and uh, economically secure um, than I am. And so, um, and so I'm always short of money and she always has money. So I was like, could you lend me a thousand krona? I promise to pay you back. Now this sentence, I promise to pay you back. That's what we're interested in analyzing today um, because promises, it's important to know whether people are telling the truth, right? And traditionally in um, philosophy of language, we've always wanted to decide what is it that counts as truth telling? Um, what, what, how do we know when somebody is telling the truth? And there have been um, philosophers that have spent enormous amounts of ink um, on analyzing the, the kind of question, um, when is it true that X is true? So for example, how do we know that snow is white, really relevant at the moment? And, um, and philosophers have tried to say um, something like, um, snow is white if and only if, snow is in fact white which gets us precisely nowhere it doesn't tell us anything and it says and it builds up this caricature of philosophers of people who discuss utterly useless um utterly useless statements and explanations now here in staging citizenship we do want you to be really good philosophers absolutely we do uh, but we we don't want you to be useless philosophers we want you to take um, thoughts seriously. And in actual fact, the, the, the sentence, I promise to pay you back, is um, something that we kind of need to know the truth about, um, um, because, um, because I promise to pay you back is something that um, is the basis of our money, for example, as you can see here from uh, a £20 note, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of £20. And we need to know, is this actually money? And if it is money, then we can use it. And if it's not, then we can't. And usually people just uh, take the money and say, I, yes, I believe this is true. But what is it that we know that it's true? Have I made the promise? When I say, I promise to pay you back, that describes the promise. But when did I make this promise? Um, and um, is it possible, uh, is, is it right for me to, for you to think that I have promised now since I haven't now said these words? Is it any situation in which I can say, the, um, say these words and they will be true? So we can analyze this sentence at the boring philosophical level of when do we know, when is it true, um, the statement, I promise to pay you back? Um, is it true if and only if I have indeed promised to pay you back? Um, or more importantly, um, where, where did this and what, when did this promise take place? So we can analyze it at the grammatical um, level of this is a description of something which is going on. Okay, there is another level um, on which we can analyze it, and that is my manipulative um, uh, nature, um, i.e. what is it um, I, as Andrew, am trying to achieve? And obviously I am assuming that she's going to forget and so that I will never have to pay her back. Um, so all I really need to, um, her to do is to give me the money. Um, so that is my strategy, that is my purpose. And we can decide very well with strategies. It's not a true false thing. It's, it's, is it successful or not? And obviously it is successful if she gives me the money and she forgets, you know, that means I earned 1000 krona um, by playing on her, um, on her naive nature and her trust in me, which is obviously you should never ever trust me because I, as all teachers, lie. Um, um, but you can tell that I'm not about to get, um, I'm not, uh, I'm not very successful if I start shouting and saying, you're really well, I do, I promise, you can believe me, I trust you, you trust me, it's important that you trust me, I'm trustworthy. And as we all know, as Taylor Swift says, um, if you're well, if you're yelling, then you're the one who's lost control of the conversation, um, I, slightly less successful if I'm, if I'm yelling, um, if I'm shouting and obviously um, ultimately, um, if if she doesn't give me the money, then it's not successful. It's really black and white. It's really clear. But what is it that's just happened? What, are, what we, I feel like we're dancing around it. If we're discussing the truth 
um, either on the one hand, the, the grammar of the issue, the truth conditions of I promise, uh, but on the other hand, the strategy, how rich as is Andrew at the end of the day and how rich is Gunnar at the end of the day. Those are two things, but I feel that we haven't really got to the grips of the promise itself. How do we know that the promise is it, um, itself has happened? And that's not a question of the truth conditions because the truth conditions are true if and only if the promise has happened. That means we still want to know whether the promise has happened. And the strategy, the intentions, that seems to think, that seems to be independent of the actual words. That's just a description of what's going on before and after this statement. Um, so so between those two, um, two things, how do we know that a promise has taken place? Because the promise seems to happen when I say the words I promise that I'll pay you back. And that is the performative. It's neither the, the description nor the strategy. It's the actual promise. And we know that something um, has um, the promise has happened or hasn't happened based on the fact that um, that it has to be in the correct conditions, i.e. Uh, we're not quoting. We're not on stage. We're not going, I promise. Um, we're actually saying, and I'm maybe looking you in the eye and concentrating on you, I promise, and maybe we're shaking hands, um, and, and I sound very, uh, very honest at the time. Um, but, um, and, and there are things that could go wrong. So, for example, if I say I'm going to pay you, I, I promise I will pay you a squillion pesetas. And that's never going to work because uh, for one for one thing, squillion is not a word. And for another thing, pesetas are no longer legal tender anywhere. Um, so there is there are things that could go wrong, but it's not a question of true or false. And it's not a question of successful or unsuccessful. It's just has this been a promise? Is that is this a real promise or not? And what Austin um, says is these are performatives. They're not a question of true or false. They're not a question of successful or non-successful. So he says there's something in between there. there um, he gives this the word felicitous or unfelicitous, which is to say, has the promise taken place or not? And um, and we can and, and, and I would say this is between grammar and strategy. We can actually. Um, um, study an awful large uh, number of these things. Promises work like this, swearing works like this, and betting works like this. There are an, an, a large number of um, performatives. And as I've said before, they're actually, um, uh, it's quite difficult to add to their number because we all have to agree that this is one of the ways in which we are together. In actual fact, promises have been extremely important through European um, um, through European history, um, and promises by God have been one of the things that everyone needs to have relying um, relied on, and that and that's one of the reasons religious differences have been such a hindrance for, for example, markets, um, and uh, why so many Vikings, for example, um, um, probably were tempted to become Christian because they wanted access to the market. So the question of access to the European market is a really old thing um, and has been a discussion in Europe for a very long time. And one of the reasons is um, and one of the ways of doing this is understanding and, and being able to do proper performatives.